Hi, I'm Ranger Dave. Today, we're at the Fox Hollow Trailhead, where we're going to get to explore this beautiful 1.2 mile hike. Now today, we're going to learn a little bit about the historic land use here at Fox Hollow and the impacts that change through time. Before we get started on our hike today though, we want to make sure we're safe and ready to hike. Having a light pack like this with water, snacks, a map, or a first aid kit can help prepare you on your hike. Now if you don't have a map, we also have trailheads just like these that help you plan out your hike and pick which one you'd like to do for the day. On this hike, we're also going to see some wildlife, potentially. And I'd just like to rem remind you guys that if we do see wildlife out here, to respect a safe distance and let them pass and not to disturb them. Now as we get started on this hike, we're going to go down into the forest. But before we get started, I'd like you guys to think about some impacts we can see here in the park, on this trail and all throughout the park. Now, in the comments below, please be respectful to everybody as we all come from different backgrounds and different areas. So our impacts of the land might be viewed differently from making a footprint to throwing trash in a trash can or even just moving a tree branch off the trail. So please be respectful to everybody as we go through this film. You guys have a fun day, let's go. You know how we talked about those impacts that we see and we face? This tree right here, you know, we, the Park Service, have a duty to uphold about what impacts we make here in the park. This tree did fall over and it was natural. But as you can see, these cuts are smooth, made by a chainsaw. So we changed the land with our impact by making the trail safe for you guys to cross and enjoy. Impacts can be large or small. And that's just a thing to think about as we continue on our hike. You're joining me now here at the first trail junction on the Fox Hollow Loop. And just a reminder for safe hiking, whenever we see one of these junction boxes, we wanna make sure we stop and read the metal band to make sure we know which way to go on our hike. Hopefully we've had some time to think about those changes and impacts we've seen or that we can experience in the park every day. And I like to ask, why should we, the park service and hikers, care about those impacts and changes? Well, it's because it's part of our mission to preserve and protect. What do we preserve and protect? The wilderness, you know, the forests, our natural cultural history, and even our wildlife. And today, we're gonna to look at why it's called Fox Hollow. Some of our cultural history here, the historic land use in its aspect of how it's changed from the families that have lived here. On this trail marker here, it says Fox Hollow for a reason. It's because there's more than just land here. There's a story to this land. And we're gonna to get to take a look at what that story is. So as we're going to our next stop, we wanna make sure to keep an eye out for some of those obvious signs of historic land use here in the park. So let's keep going and see what we can find. Along with trail markers, we have trailblazes on our trails that help make sure you know where you're heading, just like these. We're hiking along, and I had mentioned some of those obvious signs that we had seen. This is pretty obvious that it's not natural. We get a lot of questions about what this is and why they're stacked. Part of the story comes back to the family here, the Fox family and why Thomas Fox stacked all these stones away from his fields where he farmed corn. And so he worked hard stacking all these stones. And as you can see, land changes from our use to current use and to how it's currently changing from a perfectly stacked pile to rocks moving by nature with trees or even animals that live in here. It's kind of a unique thing to look at on our trail, how we can see this land change. So let's keep looking for those obvious signs. We're here now at the Fox Hollow Family Cemetery. And we're gonna talk about their lives here on the mountain before it was the park. Back in 1856, Thomas and Martha Fox 
moved up here on the mountain, purchasing about 450, 500 acres to use for themselves as a self-sustaining farm. As we looked at those stone stacks before, they, were, they originated as stone pyramids kind of shape. And Thomas and his sons stacked those stones for two reasons. The first I had mentioned because of the farming corn. The second was because he didn't want those rocks to go back in the field. So it was a matter of something to look at as an accomplishment for coming up here and using the land for his purposes. Over there back on that side of the, of the trail is where he farmed his corn, his personal garden, and built his house up here. Thomas had four sons, and the one that we're going to focus on today is Lemuel Fox. He was one of the four sons that returned after the Civil War to farm the land with his father. And why we're focusing on Lemuel is because Lemuel Fox had Lemuel Fox Jr., his son, who actually came back to this property as well, and who we were able to get an oral history from to be able to share these stories with you. Now Lemuel Fox Jr., he actually worked at the Sneed Farm, which is a couple miles that way. And the Sneed Farm was an apple orchard um, for international production. And so he would work there and live on this side of the farm. The Fox family faced a lot of challenges moving up here on the mountain. Between having to clear the land for the corn or for their grazing cattle, this landscape was completely different. Land use was seen for lumber and production instead of taking in nature as it is today. And that's where we get in the park service aspect of how we protect and preserve. We want the land to be natural. We like the growth that we can see here in the forest, but we also want to preserve our history that we have, keeping these stories alive. And that's one of the challenges that we have to find that fine line of where is the growth allowed, but the protection of our history to stay. And that's why we really like to share these stories with you. These hardships, this beautiful nature, this adventure of Fox Hollow. So as we keep going down, we'll still keep an eye out for the changes that they did here to help them be successful. But I'd also like to think about how the park has changed since the Fox family has left from the 1930s to present day today. How has the land changed since they last saw it? Let's keep an eye out as we go on. We're continuing on our hike, and we see this right here, this concrete structure. And I often get asked, what is it? Well, it's a spring box. And while it's not historic to the Fox Hollow family, it's historic to Dickey Ridge Lodge. This was put in place back in the 1930s, 1940s, when the lodge moved in, and this is where they get the water for what is now the visitor center at Dickey Ridge. But the Fox family probably used this same spring head for their own water while they're farming and living out here off the land. So let's keep going. In the background, we can see some of the stone walls that the Fox family built up around their property. And right in front of me, you can see growth of flowers that happen in the summer and recede back in the spring, showing that it's a seasonal bit of how we see nature throughout the park, growing up around the cultural history around us as we keep hiking along and looking for these stories of the past. You're joining me here now at my favorite spot on the Fox Hollow Trail. This sycamore tree right here is a good stopping point. It's about halfway down the trail, and it has a rich history with it. Like I said, we had these histories from Lemuel Fox Jr. Well, he actually walked this trail and was quoted saying, wow, I used to come here and sit on this tree, and you could see all the way down and all the way up the mountain, clear as day. This forest was different back then. The land was different for the farming, for the grazing. And now, almost 100 years later, it's grown up into a succession forest, a forest of regrowth. Succession being from a lot of different meanings, whether it's scarred from fires, land erosion, lumber, you know, deforestation, 
or even just personal agricultural use. The regrowth of this forest is new compared to what it looked like years ago. The Park Service aims to have these regrowth forests so that we can have the natural habitat as close to what it used to be. Of course, you can't be original all the time. And we maintain these trails. We maintain the roads, the visitor centers, the buildings, all of this area in Shenandoah. And so we impact the land as well in other ways for visitor use and for visitor access. So land ch use changes through the years in what we aim to see it as. From back in the 1800s with deforestation so we could build those railroads to cross into the west to today using it for paper or for current lumber. We see uses differently as time goes on. And so I like to ask you, what do you think this forest would look like in 100 years from now? In 200 years, will this sycamore tree still be here? Maybe not, but we'll have a new tree in its place, growing up in the forest. These changes we can see and beautiful to embrace while we can still have the history here. And as we continue on wrapping up this hike and going to our next spot, I'd like to think about the sort of way we will be in the future, what the Park Service will be like, what the land will be like. Will this trail still be here? Will we still have visitors here to enjoy the tree? Let's think about that as we continue on. As we're rounding out the hike here, heading back towards the meadow at the beginning, we've learned a lot about public land use and how land use changes throughout the years. But we also learned that even we, the Park Service, me, the visitors, doing something small, such as picking up trash on our way around the trail, can have such a huge impact on the environment here. Public lands play a vital use in education for wilderness, wildlife, and cultural history preservation. How we treat this land today will vary and depends upon what it will look like in the future. Change is inevitable, but it shouldn't be viewed as a negative side of our wildlife here, our wilderness. We should look to change eagerly. Like I said, how will this forest look in 100 years from now? How will this area look in 200 years? It all depends upon how we treat it. So as we get to hike Fox Hollow, think about those lessons that we got to see, those uses that we got to learn about, and what we can do the next time we're out here on trail. So have a fun time hiking.